Let's do Castle Grayskull today. Now don't get intimidated when it comes to drawing from reference and not making stuff up. I'll show you some tricks here that we can use to help us get the proportions correct and not screw up sort of the general look of this. One thing we know is that all these lines are pointed towards a point like just slightly off the page like up here. So if we draw straight lines they'll all sort of merge right up here. And you can do this with your paper too. You can just put a point maybe even off your page that you always draw to either with a ruler or something else. The benefit of drawing this from reference is that we don't need to do that because we have these lines already there for us. But if we were making this up and we had to draw this in perspective, we would want to, to get that sort of one point perspective established. Um, but like I said, we don't need to do that in this case. But I just wanted to point that out. That That's probably how this person maintained the, the, the correct perspective of this castle. Um, and I found this image online. If you just search for Castle Great Skull, it'd be like the first picture that comes up. So go ahead and pull it up on your iPad or whatever. You know, if you're drawing this in pencil. Um, and then a good tip to get the, the proportions correct is break this screen up into thirds. One way to do it is just to look at this empty space. Don't draw the pillar. Um, because the, the biggest challenge with drawing reference is that your, your, the part of your brain that knows what this pillar looks like or has a reference for what that looks like will get in the way. And you'll end up drawing, you know, your classic, you know, this sort of thing. When it doesn't look like that, you know, it looks like... It looks like whatever it looks like, you know. I'm, I mean, I'm making this up, but it doesn't look like this. It looks like this. So the problem is, though, we get we get caught into this little battle between these two things in our brain, where once you have a reference of something and you think you know what it looks like, like a tree, every time you draw a tree, it's going to look like that instead of how the tree may actually look in front of you with you know branches protruding like we did in our tree um, our tree demo that we did you know stuff is twisting and coming out at us and you know they don't always look like you know your classic kid tree like that but for even some adults will still draw a tree like this because they never got past that. Only draw what's in front of you. Don't make it up. That's, and you'll, you'll find yourself, if you ever find yourself deviating from the reference and just start going to town and what you think it looks like, stop yourself and look back at the reference and figure out, you know, what is that actually looking like in front of me? What is that shape that I'm trying to draw? Maybe it's not a pillar. Maybe it's this, this area in the sky. You know, you're trying to come up here and around, and there's a straight line right here, and there's this little tooth right here. You see this little purple tooth? And then we've got this little arc here, and then it comes down to, like, this rabbit's foot. You see that rabbit foot? You know, if we drew the rest of the rabbit here, maybe his head's here and his ears his tail like that's his foot sticking down in there you know um, it just helps to, to trick your brain into seeing what's actually there and not trying to draw like this structure of course if you are able to do this comfortably go ahead and do that that's kind of what I will do but just kind of as a beginner's tip go through and, and try to draw the empty space just to get over that little bit of intimidation that little bit of a, that fear that you feel when you look at a reference and you think you can't do it. That'll just help you break that up. Another trick 
is to break the screen into thirds. You can either do this with a piece of cellophane or you can actually draw on your reference image or you can imagine that, that third and then you translate that same information to your page. So, and I'm holding down shift, I can't actually draw a line that straight. So there's our, our thirds, and here's our thirds. So now, actually I'm gonna redo these lines because they're a little ratty. And for this to work correctly, your paper has to be the same exact ratio as what your reference image is. Uh, mine's close, it's close enough anyway. It's not exact. And since this is sort of like someone else's art, it doesn't have to reference like a person's face. It doesn't have to match the likeness exactly. It'll be close enough. So now we, we see right inside of this, this third, and I can already tell that my square is too wide just because of the way my thirds are. But I'm just showing this to you as an example. I'm not going to use this technique, but let's say I was. Look how easy this would be. Look at where this, these eyes meet up with that, that top square. They're right here. See how the space is right here? So we just kind of match that. Top, the bottom of the nose is right kissing that line. It's coming up like this. Now, would we have drawn the face in this spot had we not put these lines in? Probably not. So it just kind of goes to show you that, it, you know, it, sometimes these little um, these tricks help to get us into the right spot, you know. So this pillar, let's say, maybe it's right up here. This arc, you know, it's coming off the top of the eye, like right there. Right there, um, right here in this little corner, we've got the jaw starting to kind of cascade down. Right in that corner, we have the corner of that other tower. Um, almost in line with like this midpoint between the tower and the eye, or the crown and the eyeball, it's where the top of that other tower is. So we'll kind of, we'll rough that in. Now you see this empty space right here and we'll draw that in this square. So, so you, you can begin to see, like look at this little shape right here. It's right, right there. And you've got the tower coming up like that. So that'll just help um, get all this all this stuff sort of laid into the right areas and when I do this of course I'm not going to be quite as accurate but I don't really care because if it doesn't match exactly it's going to have my own little flavor to it but I used to do that all the time I had um, I bought like a little piece of cellophane and I printed it I printed a grid on it and then I match that grid with my drawing. So let's say you had to, in, like this is a really tiny photo or something. If I put the grid on, on each one of my grid spaces was an inch, then on my paper, maybe each grid was two inches. So that was a way to easily enlarge something. Okay. All right, so I'm just gonna start drawing this now. And I'm looking at right that point where the top of the eye meets that crown. So now I know where that crown 
how small it actually is on the face. Always pick little, you know, helper points so you get that proportion correct. And if you're, um, you know, start start lightly with your pencil. And if you reach a point where you're really kind of like committed to an area, you know, go ahead and drop a dark line down. And the bottom of this one is sort of in line with that other one, so I want to make sure I get that in there. If you squint your eyes, almost to the point where they're closed, you'll just see those like teeth appear. Try to imagine that shape and sort of where it sits on the screen. And then there's this distance here, so it's kind of where the bottom of the jaw starts, I'm imagining. It's close. Because we've got this wrinkle right off of the nose where that tooth is coming out. So don't, make sure you, um, you're imitating this. So just kind of like start using other pieces that are already down to help you. So you've got this, imagine the tip of that nose, that's what I'm doing anyway. So the tip is the top of the nose and then imagine that angle almost matches where that tooth is starting. I'm going to just get that tooth laid in there, right there, just so I get, it might be too far down still. So, and you know, drop it in lightly, see if it matches. And then there's this, um, there's a space here. And then the other one starts over here. So we got those. Try to get that curl in there. And just keep in mind that the viewer standing at the head of this castle is looking up. Almost to the they're almost to the the, the drawbridge and they're looking up. So everything is Everything you're looking at, you're looking at um, from that perspective, so just keep that in mind. That's why the teeth are sort of like coming, they're not going to be, you know, like your typical tooth. They're going to be, the top is going to be much rounded because it's almost pointing right at us. And then the tip. you know, is instead of being there, it's right there because, you know, it's pointed more instead of like that. It's like that. You know, if you imagine like an arrow. Just keep that in mind with everything. And again, we have this reference, so we don't have to be super exact. Um, but it's just something to keep in mind as we start, you know, fleshing this out more. All right, so we've got this other, we got this cheek right here, and then right, kind of coming off of that, there's that other. Part of this tooth sort of like shell that's sticking out. So let's get this tooth shell in there and this one. 
and just keep checking yourself as you go and give yourself permission to make make a mistake like I don't I don't know as I'm doing this if all my proportions are going to be correct I just I'm just trying to do the best I can so okay so imagine this the tip of this tooth think of this angle coming down and then that's sort of where this other tooth is this bigger one is kind of sitting right there tip of this tooth imagine that angle sort of in line with this one try to get match this angle too as it's coming out you know it's kind of coming off and then swooping down and then this one is the mirror of that other one so just get that in there kind of take a little bit of a thought out of it because we already have one down we don't need to think about that too much get that uh, match that circle in there as it's it's a little bit pointier up here and then that tooth comes down like that and eventually be hidden by these other ones and then we can just imagine a straight line just kind of mirror that other tooth and then we can put in these other teeth now So now I'm looking and I'm thinking we didn't quite get the angle right so I'm going to move this one down and if you're in pencil where you can just erase and just redraw but that's fine I'm just I'm noticing I didn't get this arc in there well enough and I've if I was doing this in pencil believe me I would erase and just keep working at it until I got everything correct that's why we're doing it light line and we're not making dark lines yet so we have the freedom to go in here and still adjust there it's much better like here let me just do it then. So I just erase that tooth and I would I get that sucker in there. Just redraw it. Just consider it more practice. If you gotta redo something, it's just more practice. Get the miles in. And then we got uh, okay, so we got the cheek up there. Then right at this tooth we've got this like kind of bone shell that it's sitting in. This one has this one. We don't see, well, we see a little hint of that right here. Just get that line in there. These we'll do with highlights later, so we're not going to worry about these ones right here. This one doesn't have any. It's pretty dark right there. I love the little I love these little like cuts in this tooth. It's cool. Might do another one in that one. Just I like it so much. Maybe one here. Why not? It's our drawing now. And then again, when we did our tree, remember we had those contour lines? So always think about that when you're doing a cylinder or something. It's never flat. Everything's got a little bit of a curve or a contour to it. Unless it is flat, but in this case it's not. All right, so we're right on this too. So I'm comfortable with it where the teeth are. You know, if I keep if I keep glancing back and forth, I think we're close enough. Just with the you know the distance, we're matching the shape correctly, the spacing. So now I can go in, and since we have that as a decent enough reference, now I can add this little shell to this tooth here. And now we'll just build out from here. We'll come up kind of close to this one. And then we'll do this cheek here. There. You can see. It's kind of like doing a 
you know, one of those paper mazes, but with your eyes closed, eventually you'll hit a point where, you know, the two areas are supposed to meet and you'll just luck out. And if they don't, then you know you screwed something up, so just adjust it. And that's sort of the fun in drawing, too, is that, you know, a lot of this trial and error just takes time and it's, you know, it's fun. Okay, and, and you know, we can adjust some of this stuff later. I'm not too worried about any of these, like, because these, I know these have, like, little lumps and stuff in them. That's pretty good. I'm just sort of imitating some of these darker areas. All right, so that's pretty good for the, the teeth area. Now we'll do these little pieces to the castle area up here. So we've got these little um, supports. Now I'll look at the part of the eye where that comes out. It's like right in this area, right in that. Not quite, well, I guess it would be the halfway point. So it'd be like right here. And draw what you see. Don't don't insert something that's not there. Remember, if you don't know what it looks like, you don't know what it looks like, and don't pretend you know because it'll look wrong. Now, same thing with this eye, it's about the halfway point. Okay, now we can sort of get the top of the crown in there, that little ring. Kind of meets up with the edges of those supports. And then it curls around right before we get to the end of that eye, right there. And then this one sort of disappears into the shadow there. But then it's not quite a straight line up and down. It's a little bit pointing to the right. We'll get that line for that tower in there. Now, this line comes out right where this bulge is right here. Right at the corner of that bulge, we get this. We'll start on that little rabbit's foot thing that we did and match that angle there. It's not straight up and down. And if you have to, draw that rabbit foot in there, that little space right here. And then we'll just arc this around just to give us, I don't know, I'll give ourselves a little cheat sheet so it's right. Top of that tower is like right in line with the middle part of that crown. So it's like that's the top of the tower there. So we got this line in there, so let's just arc it up. And then we already put that line in there. So now we can put in that. Looks like we're carving into what we've already drawn. And then right about the top of that tooth is where that kind of crusty bone stuff starts. And we'll just carry that down. I don't quite know what that's going to be yet. It looks just like a garbled mess, but we'll figure out a way to make that a little bit more meaningful. All right. Now, that hole is right about the mid mid line of that the arc of this tooth so right about there is where that hole starts and that almost looks like if you cut a kind of a crappy loaf of bread if you sliced it in half 
and then think about the spacing here. It's a little less than the width of that tooth. And over here, it comes a little bit closer on this side. It's a little straight here, and then think about just before we get to the bottom of those teeth. So we get that sort of thing. Okay. And then let's get the tower bottom in there. because it's all stone. And then actually that might I might have put that a little bit too low. And think about that contour of those, um, the, the tower, Get those little arcs in there. And that'll help us later too when we do the stonework. Okay, but um, I hope you can see how I'm just slowly building this out. You know, you look at this initially as this image and you think, bam, man, I can't do that. But, you know, you take a small part like the nose and then how big are the eyes in relation to the nose and how does the top of the nose relate to the top of the eyes and all that stuff. And you just, you slowly start building it out. You know, and everything becomes a little bit more manageable. Getting those little interior lines in there. And I'm not matching those exactly. I'm just I know that as they get closer to the opening, they're gonna the lines get closer together. But aside from that, I'm just making this up. But just think about it like this, like it's a tube. And as we're looking up, we're seeing more of the bottom part of the mouth.
Okay. Now let's the eye, like this part of the eye right here. That little thing is sort of the midpoint of that is where that bottom of that tower has its little arc. And I think my tower might be a little bit wider than the reference. So I'm gonna, sh I'm gonna small make that a little bit smaller. I'm gonna smaller that. And then I'm gonna keep this angle correct best I can. Still might be too wide. Okay. Just get the top of that in there. I can do this little sections now. Now we can use that line as a somewhat of a cheat sheet. get these lines in there so as they come around the front they get more straight and as they rotate around they go a little bit more towards horizontal and this is all just black in here so I don't really know and you know what if this process is painful then I say good because that just means you have to put in more miles and it just means that you have a lot more to learn but the more you do this each drawing is going to get a little bit easier okay so now what we need to do is get these these little lines in there for the stonework this will help us later the further down we go, the closer they're going to become. They're going to get the parallel, and the further up they are, the more arc they get. Just because they're facing. It's basically, if you draw your eye from horizon up, you'll reach a point where what is horizontal or what's vertical will be facing directly at you. So that's why these lines will start off straight down here, and then as they go up, they'll curve. They'll get more, the arc will get more intense as they go towards the sky. Just because that perspective of what, how you're viewing them is changing. Hopefully that makes sense. All right, now we can I think we're ready to do that stonework. It's going to take us a little while, but it's going to be fun. All right, so we need, and these don't have to be perfect straight lines because remember they are, they are little stones. And since we have these lines in there already, we give ourselves a little, uh, little cheat sheet, like I always say. And then the bottom part of that one comes out in the middle of the other one. Just make sure that we're always following the logic of that arc. So the bottom of our stones are always, and we could even 
rough that line in there and, and the edge of this will be a little bald because that's where that stone's sitting. And you can be sort of rough with this. We can always define it later when we do the shading. But I'm also doing a tutorial, you know, if I was working on this drawing over a day or, you know, I have been known to work on drawings for a few days. You know, I could take my time and really get in here and geek out over each one of these little stones and where they sit. And So I'm not being too careful here. I'm just kind of busting through this for demonstration purposes. But you can see already, I mean, I didn't spend that much time on it. And just little hints, like these little bulges here, maybe darkens the bottoms of some of these and just think about like how they're interacting maybe this one sits back a little bit so that the, the edge of that one's sticking out more and just that little little detail will draw the viewer's eye in and makes it look like real stone all right so we have a bulge here it's like a big I'm just going to lay these lines in here now. So all I have to do is draw these. Oh, and make sure that the our lines are always following the logic of that foreshortening, that point up here. So we really should have drawn in these cross sections just so we can maintain the... Don't get some wonky um, stones that aren't facing the right direction. And it is hard because your mind sort of wants to put these stones in straight up and down but it would definitely end up looking wrong so we have to stick with this foreshortening logic where we've got that point up here and everything sort of points up at that and then the other thing we need to do is maintain the circumference of um, the tower being that it's a cylinder Make sure that we have that arc in there every time. And now we can kind of clean up some areas that don't really have great definition. Okay, and then teeth are sort of in this general area. And then we've got, let's say, the edge of that tooth. So if you draw a straight line like that, that's sort of right where the edge of that drawbridge is. So I'll get that in there and then we have that little arc of the edge of the drawbridge door, the top of it kind of laying on the ground. front of that drawbridge door 
Remember to draw what you see. Watch how tight that line gets right there. Because if you start drawing what you think is a door, you're not going to, it, it'll look weird. Okay, so now right at the edge of this door here, we have that tooth sticking up. And it overlaps our bigger tooth. And then we have a, see this angle right here? This tooth kind of, let's just imagine it sits down like that. And right and at the midway point, we have a tooth kind of sticking up right there. And it's the bottom part of that tooth is angled just because of that step. And then uh, right here is this other tooth coming up. Get this right here. It's overlapping there. Okay, and then we've got that one. Mind the overlap there. Just look at those shape relationships. Don't think teeth in front of other teeth. Just draw what you see. Everything you need to know is right in front of you. There's no secrets. See how there's this angle right here? Gotta go like that. So tooth number three would be right there. And then the small tooth, remember that angle, it's gonna be right there. Now, before this tutorial, would you have just gone to town and start drawing teeth in there and then wondered why you're frustrated because it didn't look right? So like I said, always, always try to be aware of that moment when you think you can take the reins and draw based on what you know and not what you're seeing. Stop yourself. And you know what, I think um, if you look at this distance here, my drawbridge is, I think, a little bit too big. So I'm going to go in and um, try to rectify that a little bit. Uh, actually, just because I'm in the digital world, I'm going to kind of cheat a little bit here. one of these okay that's better had I left it the way it was I would have been fine too I just want to make sure that we're getting everything um, aligned properly and you know what these teeth here line up at the bottom of that. Drawbridge door. So this kind of comes down like that. There. And we'll get these little stairs in there. And I'm using, um, you know, my digital assistants here to sort of um, draw these lines straight, but you could just use a ruler too. Just trying to get these stairs straight so they look decent. There's another 
You heard the word teeth, didn't you, Keeney? You got interested. What do you think? That's cool. Pretty cool, huh? Draw the same as this, this one. Well, I will there. I'll get there eventually, but right now I'm just kind of trying to get the the bones in there. All right. This line's a little weird. There. Yep. You need it the darkest color, like dark, dark, dark. Well, you know what? I think I might do that in a different layer. Like this is a this is one of the earliest earlier steps, and then I might go in later and get the darker parts See? in there. Darker. Who's calling me now? Ah. Uh. Hey. Okay. Who's calling you? Mom. All right. Yeah, I can bring it over there. All right. See ya. You want to say hi, Keeney? Mm -mm. Mom hung up already. That's kind of getting big. Then you have to do like light or dark right there. Okay, you got my pencils down there, careful. Is that a 3D pencil? A 3D pencil? No, that's a um a gel pencil. Ew. No, it's don't play with it though, because it'll the ink will go everywhere. <laughs> See, I'm just slowly building tones here. Ah, come on. <laughs> hey. Okay. See ya. Is mom keep calling you? Who is this? She's trying to tell me about the tax guy coming over tonight. We've, we've been trying to exchange the tax stuff to him for a while and we haven't been able to connect with him. Need it darker. No, I know. I'm just dumb. I'll get there eventually. I'm just trying to get this stuff. I'm building slowly enough so I don't make any mistakes that I can't back out of. I'll see you ruin. Yeah, well, you won't really ruin it. Oh, I guess you could ruin it, but you gotta, there'll just be a lot more work to change later if you don't get this first couple steps right. You gotta do blue for the yep. steps and then green right here. Then. Golden color right there. Very good. Golden color in the teeth and blue. Very good. Here. You've been paying attention, haven't you? Paying attention to this. Yep. <laughs> so. You've been using your iPad app and painting? I don't have an iPad. That iPad app you got, the painting app. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we got it a long, long time ago. Yep. What is this 
this pencil? Is That's a um, white charcoal pencil. Charcoal pencil? Yep. These are just pencils. Which one is the... Oh. Oh, there is. My favorite. Dad, did you draw this guy? Uh, no, that came with the drawing pad. Looks like you did. No, nope, I wish I was that good. <laughs> someone must have drawn that. Yep, someone did. It's hard to do these horizontal lines, so I turned the canvas like this because it's easier for me to draw these long lines vertically if I can stroke down with my hand instead of across. See that name? Where's the gray scar picture? Um, it's on the side of my canvas. Gotta draw blue. By the power of gray skull! He man! I have the power! That's just embarrassing in the microphone. <laughs> you think it's embarrassing? For who? Me? Mm -hmm. No, I'm not embarrassed. Well, to say that and then ruin no, the video. No, I'm not ruining the video. When will you put it on YouTube? Um, I don't know. I might. I don't know. If, so, you think anyone's going to want to um, draw a Castle Grayskull like this? Mm-hmm. Sit here and watch me draw mm -hmm. for hours on end. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and not, not doing a fast motion. Human. Human. Well, John's going to be coming over soon, so I have to. Um, Pause and then. Who's John? John, uh, the tax dude. That just comes over today? He's gonna be coming over soon. Like in an hour? No, like in 15 minutes. <gasps> but that was a little bit ago, so he'll be coming over any moment. Okay, so I'm gonna pause and then come back. Okay, let's get that floor in there. That's right, see right here at the corner of this drawbridge, right here. That's sort of where that... floor area is. There's a, like a little rock thing right here. And there's all this garbly gook. We'll figure that out in a second. And then this kind of comes off like that. Same with over here. We have like these things. Right here by this tooth we have that thing. And then, still following that foreshortening, that um, point member that was up here. We'll follow that same logic with these angles. All right, now we need to work out what the heck this stuff is. I think it's like, It's kind of like Castle Grayskull is like half bone and half stone. It's almost like it was formed by some spell. So we'll just, we don't have to be too precise, but you know, we'll just start blocking in some of these spiraling overlapping shapes. You know, there's sort of pseudo interlocking. Just like roots. And they could just be squiggles, but you know, have some sort of plan 
otherwise they will look like squiggles. Just make sure they overlap. Just spend a little time on them. Just so that they kind of look like stone or something that makes sense. And this area in here is all dark shadow, so I'm not going to worry about that. Um, looks like we have some sort of hint of some kind of stone. And for this area, I am, it would just take me way too long to try to imitate this exactly. So I am sort of using some license and I'm just guessing at what some of this stuff is and what I guess what I'm trying to say is I'm I'm making up my own version. Just I mean in a way it's just sort of like a random and then this is all a shadow in here. It's a very deep shadow. All right. <clears throat> There we go, and then this is this area in here is just all that floor. And then we can darken this area. It's like that little grassy part. I guess that technically would be moss, not grass. Alright, I need to kind of work out what these forms are. Let the let the, our random line sort of inform a little bit as to what this stuff is. It's kind of like half we know what it is and half the lines are sort of telling us what that is. That one kind of looks more like brain. This one's a little bit better. But hopefully in that shading we can correct some of that. All right. I just switch over to a um, different brush. Kind of a darker. Do some of the shading. Okay, I think we're ready to color this. I could just tinker with this some more, but like with these, shade these a little bit more. Ugh, I don't like that brush. Too dark. A little too committal. I'm, I'm more timid than that, Keeney. What does it look like when you um stop like drawing? What do you mean when I stop drawing? Like, Explain. Like, what does it look like when you like say, I have to stop? What does it look like to those audience that are watching this? Oh, well, I'll edit this together so they won't see those moments when I stop it and start it again. It'll just look like one video because I string them all together. Otherwise, I'd never get it done. You know, because I have to start it and stop it. You know, phone calls and people coming to the door and Sadie has to go out and take a, take a whiz and... You said that in front of the microphone. Yeah? Oh, that's right. That's that's right. That microphone's on. <gasps> <laughs> no, I knew I said that. I'll say it. I'll use it for the same feelings. <laughs> yeah. I'm 13. <laughs> All right.
Dad. Yep. You said that in front of the microphone. I did. Like everything that you said right now. On I the did. Microphone. I did say it on the microphone. Yep. <laughs> so you said audience. You said in the dark. Well, you know what? I could just tinker with this a lot more. I think I'm going to just go ahead and start to color this. Even though I'm slightly nervous because it's a little bit out of my comfort zone, but I'm going to go for it. Okay, so what do we have? We have the drawing. I'm going to leave that on top and set this to multiply. I'm going to set this to color. Why'd you put the little line at the top? Uh, so I could tell, um, I wanted to see like how far away the top of that was to the top of that um, tower area, just so I got that right. I can erase it just like that. And I can also go in here and erase these little lines because I don't need those anymore. Those are like my helper lines. And if I was using a real eraser, I could lightly go over those areas and not erase all of my Dang. graphite. Mm -hmm. yeah, no, I'm not. That's not part of the drawing. Those are like my little helper lines. Mm -hmm. That's the drawing right there. Okay, so there's my color. I'm gonna go ahead and you ruined it. Look at I didn't. Look at the white. No, I didn't. Look at No, I didn't. Trust me. Trust me. Trust me. Trust me. Watch. Watch. Uh, look what you made me do. Just watch these cords, Neen. I don't want you tripping these cords. Tripping these cords like Watch. Watch. Tripping these cords like a big board board. Okay. Now I'm not going to cheat and color pick these purples. I'm going to try to match them by eye. <laughs> How do you cheat if you pick purple? <laughs> well, because it's like I could match these colors exactly, of course, if I just pick them with the color picker mm -hmm. like that. But I want to use my own interpretation of what those colors are. Don't worry, don't worry. The it's fine. Pink. It's supposed to be pink. Ah, <laughs> ah shoot. Yeah. Kina, you're making me nervous leaning against this table because all my cords are right there. Make me nervous. <gasps> you colored on it. I can do that though because it's um just the way that I have my Photoshop set up. I can color over the lines and they won't disappear. And this brush that I'm using is called a Blair brush because it's named after Mary Blair, <laughs> who was an artist for Disney. And she died. I don't know if she's alive or not. Yeah, probably not. She's really old. But a lot of the a lot of Disney World and a lot of Disney movies are based on her style. And her style is very rough Make but impressionistic and it's got this sort of brushy feel to it this dry brush feel Make the, um, no i'm gonna uh, i'm gonna go i'm gonna i'm gonna mm -hmm. gonna gonna i'm gonna that's make this not, a little bit bigger that's not a word gonna gonna is a word going to gonna i'm going to i'm gonna i'm gonna gonna is not a word g i'm gonna no wait it's Oh yeah, it's G. Um, oh yeah, G. <laughs> G. Yeah. Go on. Gonna. Don't know how to spell gonna. Gonna. It's really hard. Gonna is a hard word to spell. I'm trying to sound out it. I can spell any other word. I can't spell gonna, 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 gonna. Oh, seriously? What are you doing? That brush is real slow. Wow, I can't use that at all. Can Whoa. they see us? Can no, they, see? they can't see us. 
Sorry, I can't use that brush. Why? Because it was way too slow. Explain. I just want to fill in some of these white areas with paint. <gasps> I can go back over it with this other color. I need paint. More paint. Yes, purple. No. Less the purple's purple. a little too saturated. That's oh, way too. <laughs> it's way too white. I need more red. Red, red. That's not red. That's pink. That's pink. It's not red. It's not red. It's not red. It's pink. Can they hear us? Uh, can. <laughs> there, that's better. Yeah. <laughs> Draw pink all the way to the top. Ah! <laughs> pink on there. Uh, you can color over it, right? Yeah, it's just like paint. I can, you know, I can um, add more, take some away. I need like a wet brush. Wet? Yeah. Wet brush? You got a fart brush. Walk around. A bum. It's too bum. thick. Too thick. <laughs> oh. oh. Holy. No, that's not what I want either. Holy moly, it's golden. It's golden memories. It's golden memories. It's golden memories. Stop. Type it here. <laughs> yeah, that'll work. So now I can go in here and sort of define the shape of these clouds. Wow, Hey, Ken, Ken, we can't go. We can't lean against the table, buddy, because you're you're moving those cords. Okay. Who cares? Who cares? I'm not, using, I'm not using the cord that goes to your speaker. I know, I just don't want to bend. I'm not bending it. Uh. I'm laying on the table. Oh, too thick. Too arm pity. <laughs> too arm pity? What's arm pity? <laughs> but now you're going to get to the point to color in the castle. Uh, right after this step, I'll do the castle part. I just I, you got to do this area first because... Once I commit and start working on the castle, I can't really affect these areas anymore. Well, you colored in because I'll be this. hidden by other areas of paint. You colored in this. I know, but that's okay. I'll show you in a second. Why then that's you can fine. color over it. And then I can shrink this down and add more shrink this detail down. to this cloud. Hey, man. Hey, man. I have the power. <laughs> Guess what? They had a skeleton sh um jacket up there. Did yeah. you? Did mom not want you to buy it or what? No, it was too big. Oh. It was like it was super big. It was like a thirteen. Oh. You had to be did she try? Did you guys try it on? No, it was a thirteen to fourteen. Oh. <laughs> okay. No, I think I want a little bit of a brighter. Mm -hmm. Home, like mm -hmm. right in there. I want to kind of backlight the castle a little bit. Some of these brighter colors. Mm 
Looks pretty good, pretty sky-ish. Okay, now I'm gonna pick base tone for Castle Gray Skull. It's gonna be a very dark, desaturated green. Jeez, like Ken, that's really high, buddy. <laughs> Please don't hurt yourself. That's not the color of. You think it's too gray? Yeah, you have to be. Yeah, the you're color right. Of no, this. we need to we need to add a little bit more green. What? That doesn't make sense. That doesn't. I make like it though. <laughs> it doesn't. Can? Leave the teeth white. Here, watch out, buddy. I don't like it when you lean on here because you keep moving the desk. <laughs> okay, so stop doing that, please. Kind of looks like the toy that you have, right? Now that green. Mhm. Mm I'm gonna look at it. I like that variation too.
Okay. Now I need to bring in some of that sky color. Yeah, it's more of a yellow. I'm thinking about what areas are higher. It's just based on my imagination. Oh. <laughs> 
and I'm slowly building up um, tones. I'm not just kind of going in. And going light and dark and light and dark and light and dark. I'm just kind of picking a tone, building it up until I feel like I've saturated the need for that tone. And then after that tone is saturated, then I will move on to another one. But I want to make sure that I've done everything I feel like I can do with this brighter brush before I go to the new one. That really does look like putty or something. I don't know what I did there, but it's fine. And this will all be dark, so I'm not spending too much time. And I think these will be mostly white, so once we get into the blues. All right, so now I feel like we can start going a little cooler so start with that purple and we'll just cool it off a little bit You almost have to imagine that that cooler light is coming from the inside of the mouth.
What do you think, Neen? Good. It's starting to look more like the real castle. Mm -hmm. Need to, you know, or we never we never really got that brown in there, but I'm just gonna have to be okay with that. It's not light. Like that one. Yeah, it's there's a little bit of something wrong about the colors, but oh well. Uh, if you can restart it all over again. Yeah, I can't really restart it, can I? <laughs> Audience will be like, why will you do that? Now I have to watch it all over again. Right. We can get some more of that bright stuff in there though. Just hit it with a couple bits of paint. Like that area right in there. All I have to do is pick this golden and put it down here on that next step. Are you just going to leave this step that color? No, um, I just, I'm not really sure what I want to do with this area yet, so I've kind of ignored it. You should put like that, that stuff, <laughs> like the teeth stuff down yeah. here. The... It's too bright. <laughs> Wait, that's white. No, white. Yeah, I know. It's like a pink, like a purple, like a light purple. It's hard to tell though. <laughs> like a darkish pink. Yeah, it's really hard to identify colors for me anyway. Like that's still way too bright. No. Yeah. Why are there lights on in your house? Um, they uh, had their lights on. Oh, okay. Yeah, they had them on, so I left them on. I just want to make sure. Mom, look it at has, and has look at Castle Grayskull. That's super cool, huh, Keys? I'm in a rush, Keys. I'm trying to do this too quickly. <laughs> do it slower. Take your time. You have all night. No, I don't. Well, you don't have any more work. Yeah, that's true. I don't have any more work, but I'd like to do something else too. Dad, your bike is going Yeah, I mean. Um, can I draw some of Castle Grayskull? Yeah. But let me finish this part first, and then I'll let you take a stab at it. Okay. I need... Guess what I'm gonna do? What? I'm gonna um try to like. Put white, more white on the teeth. Okay. Why? Because there's white, only blue on the top, a little bit of blue on the top. Oh. Only on the top of the teeth. Oh. Blue. See, look at top. Yep, there's a little blue on the inside of the teeth. But there's a lot. It's like the whole. It's like more greenish. It's darker. Ah, the bark is on the floor. Ah! Dad? Yeah. Can those markers come off of this floor? They can't. But they're not markers, they're um they're like uh kinda like pencils. Can those come off of the floor? Why what happened? Did it get on the floor? Okay, yeah, it should that. be able to. A tiny bit. What are you doing? Well, 
<laughs> I'm just trying to wrap this up, man. Okay, so what do you think of this? <laughs> Get colored. This way, t-shirt. These are the capris I found. They're really, they're like tight. They're like skinny jean capris. Nice. You like them? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So what do you think about this? This is just this is just a jean jacket I found that was darker than though because I have a really light colored one. I wear it with like my summer sure. dresses and stuff, but it was stretchy and it was comfy yep. and it looks good, right? Yeah. And then this is a shirt. This is another common line. And that was just cool. Like Sixteen ninety nine. Well, that's the pants. Oh, this one was like, I don't know, fourteen. Oh my god. Yeah, it looks good. But I thought it was a cool color. It's yeah. like a cool, like, kind of hip. Yep. I thought it looked nice, right? Yeah, yeah, it looks nice. Okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. It's a fashion show. Okay.
This is sure I never get to try on for you. Do you like it? Mm hmm. Look at this. Um, maybe give it a thing that goes over the brass strap. Super cute. Super cute. Is it like super cute? Am I like super cute or just super You're cute? You're like super trendy and like fresh and no. I'm just, I'm trying to like keep my own style and not take my mom's, so. I'm well, just thank looking God. for your guidance and like <laughs> how I. My guidance. I do like the pants though. The pants are nice, right? Pants are nice. Okay, good. Cool. I think you've done well for yourself. Thank you. Yep. When our swords from the bun, bad bite, when our swords. They're like these little bumps that you get on your skin. Why? Because, um, that Do you think you have some? Yeah, that. You know that one that you thought that was a mosquito bite? Yeah, you think that's a bed bug bite? Yeah, I think that's a sore. You think so? I don't know because. Isla hadn't gone over to that girl's house 
when you said you had your little sore on your on your arm. That was yesterday. That no. happened last night. Yeah, your sore was from last night. And Isla, Isla was talking about her friend's house this morning. How'd she know they had bugs? Because they told her, apparently. Well, Neen, I could just keep picking at this. I think I'm going to call it a night. Ew, you <laughs> farted in the microphone. Gross. Gross. You said I could call her some. I will. I'll let you as soon as I finish this and save it. And I'm going to sign this and call it done. Let's see. Neither. Two... Two, two thousand seventeen, and then we will do this, and we'll crop out our reference. And we will save it.